these next five weeks, we're going to be reflecting on a, an, an old hymn, which you'll know when I tell you the title, or will have heard of, I'm sure. And each week we're going to take various verses until we've reflected on the whole hymn. Um, it's called Take My Life and Let Me Be Consecrated Lord to Thee. And every week Andy will lead us with his guitar and singing uh, relevant verses so that we can join with him or simply listen to the words again. So first our reading. I'm going to be reading from Psalm 18 verses 30-36. And this is what the psalm says. As for God, his way is perfect. The Lord's word is flawless. He shields all who take refuge in him. For who is God besides the Lord? And who is the rock except our God? It is God who arms me with strength and keeps my way secure. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He causes me to stand on heights. He trains my hands for battle. My arms can bend a bow of bronze. You make your saving help my shield and your right hand sustains me. Your help has made me great. You provide a broad path for my feet so that my ankles do not give way. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And as you heard it, I suppose you guessed that this was someone writing directly to God. And more of that later. So today we're concentrating on the second verse of our, of our hymn, which says this, Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Let's think for a moment what God could do through us all if all people freely offered to him the use of our hands for his purposes, our feet for his purposes. To help with that, we want to think about two very different people who lived at different times, different circumstances, and yet they shared something very precious in that they willingly offered their whole selves to God for his service. The first is David, King David from the Old Testament, who, yes, you guessed it, wrote this psalm. He wrote it as a psalm of worship to Almighty God who had provided everything he needed to use in God's service. He knew God as Almighty God in the Old Testament about a thousand years before Christ. And the second is a young lady called Frances Havergal. She lived in the 19th century in Astley in Worcestershire. And she wrote the lovely hymn that we are reflecting on as we worship. And she wrote it as worship to the Jesus that she had come to know. So let's compare these two. David, as we know, was chosen by God when he was a young shepherd boy. Here's a connection with Jesus. A young shepherd boy. Jesus is known as the shepherd of his flock. And David was eventually to become king of Israel. Here's another connection with Jesus. He was to replace King Saul. Now David couldn't possibly have known that many years later from his lineage um, would be born the promised one, this Jesus, the Messiah, who God would send in his own good time to establish his new kingdom on earth. A kingdom ruled by the Saviour, Lord Jesus. Yet in one of his many Psalms, David prophetically referred to Jesus as his Lord. Strange, when he said, the Lord, that's God, says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. So somehow, David spoke these words about the future which we know now to have come true. 
And strangely, many times in the New Testament, Jesus is referred to as the son of David. So God called David and his service was to lead his armies and under God's direction to obliterate the armies of his enemies in order to establish the nation of Israel, God's chosen people. Eventually, David was to capture the city of Jerusalem, to take up residence there and call it the city of David, where in the future, his son Solomon would build a temple to worship God as God directed. David ruled over the combined Israel and Judah for 40 years until he died in 970 BC. So why am I talking about these two people, the famous King David of the OT and Francis Havergal, the poetess who lived in the early 19th century? What's the connection between them? I think it's becoming apparent. Francis was a sweet, devout young woman, one of several children whose father was a clergyman in Worcester. She first felt the presence of Jesus, she said, in her life when she was four years old. And 10 years later, she said, I quote, I committed my soul to the Saviour and earth and heaven seemed brighter from that moment. Isn't that lovely? Frances was confirmed at the age of 17 and from then on she spent her life worshipping Jesus, seeking to know him more. She wrote many, many poems, some becoming songs, and they were written in various languages which reflect her intellect and her good education, but mostly they reflect her total devotion to the Saviour that she had come into relationship with. This is what God called Francis to do, and she fulfilled her calling. Sadly, she died at 42 and is buried in the graveyard of St. Peter in Astley in Worcestershire. Now, King David seems to be the polar opposite of Francis. His life was very different to hers, with many triumphs, but also a few disasters. We know, for instance, that David committed both adultery and murder and he received his due punishment from God. But when he realised what he had done, David repented of his sins and God, in his amazing grace, forgave him, as he always does when his children are truly sorry and turn from their silly ways. David went on to be devoted to God and obeyed him implicitly. He too was a great worshipper. He wrote many psalms of worship, psalms of praise, but also psalms of complaint. And yet others when he just cried out to God for help, much like the way we pray, I guess. Because we know we can communicate with God in many ways, but we're always assured that he hears our prayers and he answers in his great wisdom, which always knows best. But David was essentially a warrior, so much so that when he told God he wanted to build a house of worship for him, a temple where his presence could rest with his people, God's response was, no, you're not the man to do that. You are a warrior and you have shed blood. That's the purpose that God called David for, and he fulfilled it. So these two, King David and Francis, couldn't have been more different, but clearly what they had in common was this, that they both had an unqualified and total commitment to God as they knew him. David who knew him as Almighty God, and Francis who knew him as Jesus, her saviour. Yes, they both had other things in their lives, but for both, it was God who had their devotion. In 1 Samuel, when God appointed him to lead his people, he called David a man after my own heart, saying, 
He will do everything I want him to do. So God already knew that David would be obedient, faithful and totally devoted to him. And Francis, well, look again at the words of, that, of the second verse in her hymn. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in endless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. As we follow this hymn through the next weeks, we will see that Frances committed her whole self to God, just as David did. That's what these two had in common. And it underlines what God requires of all his followers, to love the Lord our God first, above all things. One of Frances Havergal's frequently used sentences was this, there must be full surrender before there can be full blessedness. There must be full surrender before there can be full blessedness. Our Heavenly Father before everything else. The theologian um, C.S. Lewis said this. Christ said this to you, to me. Give me all. I don't want so much of your time and so much of your money and so much of your work. I want you. I've not come to torment your natural self, but to kill it. No half measures are any good. Hand over the whole natural self, all the desires which you think innocent, as well as the ones that you think wicked, the whole outfit. I will give you a new self instead. I will give you myself. My own will shall become yours. So what purpose has God chosen you and I for? And how committed to our Lord Jesus, to our Father God, are we? Enough to worship him in everything that we do, our hands, our feet, our hearts, our souls, enough to bring everything to him in prayer. Do we obey him even when we don't understand? Do we ask him to order our steps, to guide our paths? And having heard, do we obey as David and Francis did? Look back for a moment and see whether God has ever let you down. Look back to remember the times, the many times when he has stood beside you in dark times, when he has carried you, when he has provided you, provided for you. So as we close, let's close our eyes too and pray David's words for ourselves. Father, your way is perfect. Your word is flawless. You shield all who take refuge in you. Who is the rock except you, our God? You arm us with strength and keep our way secure. You make our feet like the feet of a deer. You cause us to stand on the heights. You train our hands for battle. Our arms can bend a bow of bronze. You make your saving help our shield and your right hand sustains us. Your help has made us great. You provide a broad path for our feet so that our ankles do not give way. Father, we pray today that these words will sink into our souls so that we may learn to give you all that we are. Remember what we would be without you and to live our lives in worship to Jesus our Lord who has given us new life in himself. Amen. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days, 
Let them flow and cease. Let's pray. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of my love. Take my feet, let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my love, my Lord, I pour. At thy feet its treasure store Take myself and I will be ever